What's the game plan for right now? Can you explain a little bit what's going on? Uh, we're hanging up uh, Richard's work for the exhibition tomorrow, tomorrow night. And uh, kind of the initial work that was brought over, and he's kind of seeing what all we've got so far to work with. How so much work is ahead of you tonight? Probably a good evening. Yeah, about two, three hours. And probably a few hours tomorrow morning, I would think. I, with the artwork, I, mean, I, I, get, I have a lot of uh, preparatory stuff to do, be doing also. But uh, yeah, it should be good. I like, always, it comes, it comes, it comes out of the wire, it's like, you know. You want, the artist yeah. always brings stuff in until the very last minute. Yeah, well, I mean, I'll just bring in stuff at the last minute, but it's also, I mean, that's, that's my me methodology too. <laughs> Purposefully? You know? well, I mean, well, not necessarily, I think, uh, but, you know, everybody creates their own worst situation, you know? I mean, not to say it's a bad situation, but it's like, even though it's frustrating, it's what I recognize is the way that things are, and it's the way it's always been, and it's just the way I am, it's I think. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, I don't, I'm not, uh, I'm not worried that the, uh, work won't get it done, but you know, it's, it has gone down to the last Yeah, you know, like the next. The artist does that. Yeah, I mean, I, maybe that's just, maybe that's from being an artist also. Could be. Yeah, yeah. yeah. right, it could be. Yeah. And hold that in yeah, So you see problems, and you like you can look at it and realize, well, that's not. Oh yeah. That, yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, a lot of these things you get them out after a few years. You know, you're looking through old things and you think, wow, I didn't remember it looked like that. You know, or I didn't remember I did that to it. And if you if you have a clear vision, you can just sit down, redo it, and re rework it. Yeah. Especially with these little things that are made out of gouache, which is a tempera. I mean, you can you can work right over the top on those. And oil paint's a different thing. I mean, if you're working on a piece that's going to have to go up in a day or two, you got to have dry t drying time, and uh, that slows thing, that slows up the process. And ran into that the other night, bringing a piece over here, a lot of blue paint on my hand. And it's dry now. I checked it out. I, I uh, a lot, I, a lot of times I think like the bits and nicks and scratches that are on smaller pieces. I mean, that's like a. Uh, it's like, you know, scars and, you know. It's history. It's yeah, yeah. It's the story of the thing. And I think it's like, I don't know, maybe that's me being lazy a lot of times as an artist and like careless, but I, but I do like really appreciate that. Yeah. Well, some those grooves and that, like, you know. It's like, it's like a bit of ruin. It shows that it's had some life and it's had some. Yeah, I mean, I don't want to take, my, like, just the same way as a, I don't want to take, like, my grandfather's hand tools. Yeah. And just polishing. No, no, no. You know, right. I mean, exactly. even, like, they're tools, you know, they are artwork. Right. You want to protect them from rust, but you do yeah. you, know, you, you want them to last, but <coughs> all right. like, you know, the little uh, 
staple yeah. holes and stuff that are in the yeah. corners, the frayed edges from the tape, and the yeah. you know the uh, history of use. The back side, like using the back, you know, before it was actually a piece, perhaps it could be done on wood or something. The back side is a as a palette for another painting. <laughs> you know, I got yeah, you know, yeah, I've got I'll, yeah is that, it's, uh, right. a lot, a lot of that kind of stuff, that character that comes. You know, I don't need, don't necessarily always want to repair. It. I mean, there's yeah. definitely there's definitely pieces that I keep as clean and pristine as yeah. I possibly can. Yeah, but. Uh, well, some of my work uh, I did, I repaired, you know. Yeah, yeah. Other things I'm not going to touch, and for the same reasons you're talking about. Because the actual uh, the history of it showing on a piece, it's, it's a benefit to me. I, I, would, I, would, I would agree with that. Mm -hmm. Okay, more arrangement. Let's see. Yeah, the uh, first show I ever did, believe enough, when I came back from San Francisco, was mm -hmm. titled Dog Eared Diamond. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, you know, I've done things awesome. over, over, over pallets. Yeah, yeah, a palette that I, you know, throw a figure into it and it's now a painting. You need a new. I just need a little bit more leverage. Yeah, right. I never, as a kid, I would sneeze like so many times in a row that I would be in like a cold, like a sweat. And I just like, at the end of it, you're just like, <laughs> like wore you, I felt like I just ran a half a mile like as fast as I could. It was just like wore me out. It was bad. Like you just pollen, mold. What? Mold it sports. It comes over me. I never have it. Could I? Well. Alright. It must be the art. It could be. Yeah. Uh, Cool sunset out there. Really? Oh, yeah? Yeah. I don't yeah, know. It's. Oh, no, I'm going to say uh, every night, but yeah. one of the cool things uh, about that I always liked about Richard Ohio Richard was just like the never ending sky growing up in, like, out in the country. Richard and you don't usually Richard. recognize that in a city in Ohio. This is a beautiful spot for it, like right over the farmer's market. There's nothing blocking the way. It's a big, a big steep walk to the right. Let's We'll do this again. Yes. This is a never ending uh, story. You know, yeah, oh yeah, I've got I've got shit to draw all that shit. Like I say next time it's a pretty uh if you have pretty good downtown sunset. Drop, you reload, you restore. Be downtown in any city and like oh, feel us the uh, blue heron and ducks, northern geese like northern geese, uh Canadian geese. Uh, yeah, that's groundhogs, yeah, that's raccoons, great. possum, yeah. Yeah. rabbits, like all that stuff. Like, it's really yeah. cool. Works out yeah. well. But took a little, a little slice of heaven. Sure. It's not. It's not here. It's like David. Oh, Joe. Oh, well, right. That kind of works. goes into your mind when you're thinking about placement? Uh, you know, I, re I really can't articulate that. Uh, that's a hard thing to, you know, of course I try not to put too many real dark things together, uh, even though a lot of my work is dark. I try to vary sizes, uh, get large works with, with small works in, interspersed in between. Uh, so that you have kind of like a drama, and kind of a tension release, tension release. You go across the wall, 
a large piece is always more dynamic than a small piece, usually. And so the big piece is a small piece. It's breathe, inhale, breathe, inhale, breathe, inhale. And I try to do that. I try to keep like a big bright piece like this. Uh, I want that when people first walk in because I want, I want them to feel the optimism of it. That way when they come in and they see darker pieces, then they have something already in their in their mind that, that that's a, a pot, a more of a positive a positive place to be, and and uh, <clears throat> my shows aren't consistently dark, and so I try to try to alternate the light and the dark. What do you think the balance is between light and dark percentage-wise of your work? More dark, more dark. Is there a reason? Uh, I think early in my life. I was I was pretty dark, and uh, <clears throat> I mean I myself was dark. Went through periods of depression, per periods of failure, uh, went through periods of family breaking up. Uh, you know all the things that happen to everybody, and and then of course my influences are uh, painters that were dark. I mean I love Rem Rembrandt from the old times and Caravaggio, and and a lot of that was dark. And, that was that influenced me a lot, and and and, the, and uh, cinema, you know, uh, Bergman and Fellini and uh, you know and so forth, and uh, those things were dark, interspersed with with uh, sparkly highs and so forth, and that was very that was pretty influential on me when I was young, and and it stayed. I, I kind of like uh, uh, to. Explain to uh, allude to dark places in the mind, you know, uh, because I think we all we all have them. But I like I like the balance because I think most people rebound from the dark, the dark side, and rebound and feel better, and then go back. And it's always it's it's like uh, it's like a basketball player rebounding off the things. You know, ups and downs, ups and downs, ups and downs. Life's a series of corrections, and so I think that that's partially what that's all about. I mean, the way that you describe like the difference in your art like sounds exactly like how you're trying to set it up too. That is, it is the way I'm trying to set it, up. and that's what I want. I want people to feel the ebb and flow of uh, the, the uh, optimistic and, and the pessimistic, I suppose you might say, or the dark and the light uh, in, in tone in life, and that. I try not to be a one place always. I try to, to respond to, uh, you know, daily events. I like to try to let life inform the painting, even though, you know, I've never been in a situation where there was an old running woman in the dark. And, you know, I, the day I started painting that, I probably encountered something that was dark. And it, it in, Formed and influenced the rest of my day, and that once that painting is started, then I'm I'm constantly trying to re uh, um, revisit that emotion and see if I can't I, I can't explore it in full. Do you change between like working on a dark one and working on a light one? Yeah, I like, do that. What's that like? That. Uh, it's balancing. It helps balance me. If I worked on the dark all the time, I would become very probably very if, if I. If I was letting that influence, emotion influence me constantly, that's where I would end up, and I don't want to end up there. Um, uh, you know, I like a life that ebbs and flows and, and bounces off one wall and then rebounds off the other and so forth. So uh, I also don't work bright and lively and light all the time because <laughs> life is just not like that. It has its interludes and its moments of it. So. Uh, that's pretty much the way I work and the way I approach subjects. And and it's funny because subjects, a lot of these things that I paint, especially you see it in the small pieces. I uh, I don't start with an idea. I start with move and paint. And uh, especially in the small small paint, I'll move paint, I'll move paint, I'll move paint until something starts to take on, a, you know, start to gel into a something will happen. I'll, I you know I kind of. Say, Oh, you know, oh, a running figure there would really enhance this background. It would really now start to pull out a, 
would start to gel an idea, a visual idea, not a literal idea. You know, not a literal idea. A lot of these things, I'll put a title on them, and the title is almost meant to be obfuscation. You know, I mean, it's meant for sense of humor, and uh, it's, an, it's another part of the creative process, almost like a poet approaching painting. Uh, I, lo I love the process of titling things. Well, how, how, is it, how important is it for the process of the entire thing to be able to then pick where, where you want everything in a gallery like this? It's not terribly crucial. No? It's not terribly crucial. I mean, I could come in here tomorrow and say, oh, you know, I don't like it. And I could completely rearrange it and be just as happy. I mean, it's, uh, I'm trying to make a pleasant, trying to create a pleasant experience and, uh, and allowing the things to sort of hype people make them want to buy. I mean, it's, just, it's a commercial venture as well. Although, well, that, that, to me, that's, that really isn't that huge of an issue. I mean, if I don't sell anything out of this, I'm not going to be too worried about that. Uh, I'm not painting for money. I'm painting for uh, uh, the joy of the act uh, uh, and the uh, and the emotional exploration and the, the pure creativity of it. It's like a painting will come up that I never planned at all, and I'll have it done, and I'll say, "Where in the world did it come from?" And I feel I, I like to sort of be uh, taken away by it, like a viewer that's going to come in to this opening, uh, to be surprised by what comes off that, off the end of the brush and out of my mind. I like to be uh, uh, taken by surprise. And I think, you know, you, with writers, novel, people who write novels, write, great writers often talk about the fact that they'll start a, a novel and then they're amazed at where their characters take them. And it's the same thing. It's like it pull. You start it, you generate it, but it then pulls you along, and reveals itself to you as it comes to form. And of course, a lot of works you get halfway through, and you say, "This thing, I'm painting myself into a corner. This is going nowhere," and you just stop, or you put it away, and maybe four or five years later, you pull it out and take a whole new direction on it. Are any of the ones here ones that have taken like that four or five year? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. The one of the three uh, images of Jody, uh, Seeking Consensus. Uh, the name of that, Seeking Consensus. It's all the same person. That's, you know, it's kind of what we do with ourselves. But that was a pure abstraction for a long time, and it was sitting. A lot of people liked it. It was sitting in my studio, gathering dust, and I'd taken it to a pretty, pretty, pretty far. It's, uh, there were people that were maybe even interested in purchasing it at that point. And I didn't like it. I didn't feel that it was doing anything that, I, that spoke to me. I had painted myself right into a mess. And uh, it sat there for months. And, and I had these photos I'd taken of Jody uh, in that red dress. She wanted that red dress to be photographed and maybe painted. So, and she's a friend of mine. And so I'd taken all these photographs. And I just saw that light in that painting. If I put those figures in there, they that would be almost like a Caravaggio in a way. Uh, uh, that dramatic light, that heat on the figures and the, and, and the mystery of the depth of the background. And I painted those figures in probably a week, a week and a half. And, and yeah, that's what needed to happen. I mean, and that painting is still, if it comes back over to my studio after this show, I might still do something to it. You know, it might take on a new look. I mean, you never know. These things sit around, even finished paintings when they sit around a studio, if they sit around long enough, you can come in one day and say, I'll see you, thank you all. Uh, there should be, a sh there could be a shadow there. there. There could be a dog running through this scene. There, the, the moon could be in there. And uh, things will hit you. And that's the beauty that, of the creativity. And that's what, Creativity is behind it all, and the joy of creativity and the, and the challenge of it. And, uh, and now for me, getting older, and I've retired from my daily work, and I don't have a job anymore as jobs go, and a lot of people, when they retire, they just become, old men become old men, and they don't count for much. I mean, their masculinity is taken away from them, their job, their, their point, their reason for being, and a lot, of, a lot of this painting still is wrapped up in remaining creative and productive, and it is 
has something to do with a uh, person's own feeling of manhood. Uh, I mean, for me, I mean, it's like as long as I'm working and working hard and producing and liking what I'm doing, then I I feel my life's justified. You know, I'm not sitting and having people bring me my dinner and you know and pat me on the head and point me at a television set in a, in a rocking chair. I'm mean, very active. I work late at night. And I work hard on these things, and, and I like it. I love it. You know, I like that process, and always. Will. I won't work for anybody anymore, but I'll do this forever. You know, as long as I'm around, I'll be doing this. Have you thought? You know, I don't want to get rid of that unless I get so much for it. And I have to think about the gallery and Jerry. I mean, and his. He needs. He needs to benefit from this, and and uh, so. That's part of the pricing process, you know, like trying to think about how how I can get enough out of it and still have it priced reasonably for our local area and for our market and all that stuff, and uh, still allow the gallery owner to make something and you know, make his, his share uh, because he puts in a lot of effort. You know, kudos to the gallery owner and uh, all the work he puts in and puts up with. This is the night before the opening, and I'm just bringing stuff over. And he, he's very patient, so hats off to the uh, gallery owner. All right, I'll let you get back to work. All right. <laughs> Sorry. Okay.